Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley. This is their part number FBB179, 3.5 by 3, US 1D is what this is. It's a hinge. Um, it's a, it's a, it, it's Stanley's most common uh, type of hinge in terms of the FBB179. This is a steel-based full mortise, five knuckle, ball bearing, um, butt hinge, three and a half tall, three inch wide, and a black finish is what this is. So let's just take some quick dimensional properties of it. It's three and a half by three, which means the height is the first dimension, making it three and a half inch tall, and then the width is three wide. Why would you want a rectangular hinge versus something that would be more typical like three and a half by three and a half, or, you know, three by three even? We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, the thickness of the leaf, it should be about 129 thousandths thick. My caliper tells me 122 thousandths, so it's a little shy on what I would expect it to be for a three and a half inch commercial uh, grade hinge. In the black finish, this is made of steel. This is what they would call a black coated finish. Black historically, um, black has Re black has emerged in the mid 20 teens as a popular finish um, and will probably be so for another five or ten years. Historically, black is an incredibly common finish. If you're looking at hardware catalogs from 1880, 1900, 1920, black is, is in everyone's catalog. Well, that wasn't the case in 2002 or 1983. Um, you know, black wasn't really an option, um, it wasn't popular. You know, um, that's just how that is. Let's talk about finishes and let's talk about why you might be looking at this. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. First, I suppose about finishes. Finishes like, you know, all types of um, items uh, go in and out of fashion, and they generally come back at some point maybe a little bit evolved. Mid-century is very common nowadays, um, but not direct copies, just, you know, very much based on, but not exact duplicates, influenced by, I suppose. Well, finishes are no different. Um, you know, in the 60s, uh, you're going to have satin bronze was very popular, satin brass. Um, in the 70s, you'd have an antique brass uh, sort of finish. In the 80s, would be polished brass in the 90s, certainly satin chrome into satin nickel, 2000 into oil rub bronze, uh, and then to the derivatives of oil rub bronze. Well, 10 years later comes black and it's still very popular. Um, and, you know, black, whether it be the Vogue color now, or you're just looking for something incredibly um, traditional. And if you looked at American hardware manufacturers over 150 years, in terms of a time swath, you're going to find black co uh, very common. I know this because I have, you know, catalogs from the late 19th century and early 20th century where black is listed. And you had options of black, actually. <laughs> you could do a bright black Japan. You can do a dead black Japan. This US-1D, um, you know, we're going to call this matte. Uh, you know, it will reflect a light source. That's basically, there's a light source right in front of me. Um, but this would be considered black. Uh, black coated is what it would be. Manufacturers today have different versions of black. You've got powder coated black. You've got uh, black japanned. Um, and they're all really compatible with each other. Uh, what you'll find is in a certain manufacturer's product line, they'll have a black process. So whether you're buying their hinges or their door closers or their lock sets or their panic devices, you should be able to tie that same black color together. And that logic is literally what you found in 19th and early 20th century hardware catalogs because what I mean is if you love to finish, you know, Colombian espresso walnut, whatever they would call it, these incredibly descriptive, descriptive terms, before about 1930 when there was a standardized U.S. system, this is U.S. 1D, United States 1D. The U.S. system is a result of a voluntary effort by industry leaders that was put together by the government to say, listen, 
you know, Mrs. Jones wants these hinges, but she wants to use the lock, you know, from the Acme company, but wants to use, you know, the locks from the Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe company. Uh, and they want the finishes to be the same. You know, you're calling yours Colombian Espresso Walnut, you're calling yours Colombian Espresso Walnut, but they're not the same. The U.S. system removed that from the equation. So if you called it U.S. 10B, that's a bad example. If you called it U.S. 26D, it's going to be satin chrome every time. Every manufacturer is going to follow that same formula, so it all matches. Um, and before the 1930s, it was the Wild West in the sense of you were dealing with manufacturers' finishes, but in the 19th century, pardon, in the, yeah, in the 19th century, you could buy your locks and your hinges and all of the hardware that you would need for your home, um, your handrail brackets, you could get from Sargent at one point or Corbin. Um, and that's why a large manufacturer will use a cohesive finish throughout so that they can tie you in, meaning you love the finish, great, I can sell you the hinges, the lock, the exit device, the closer, you know, even the weather stripping in some instances, uh, in a particular instance, to tie it all together is the bottom line. Now, why are you looking at this hinge? Well, you need a butt hinge is the bottom line. This is a full mortise hinge. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaf here and here that when those leaves are brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. But more specifically, you want a three and a half by three is the bottom line. Three and a half inches is a really good size for an inch and three eighths thick door. Pretty common. If you've got an inch and three eighths thick door, you can make a four inch hinge fit. It's not the right hinge to use because it's just too large um, in terms of where the spacing are for the screws. You go to a three and a half or even a three inch hinge, but three and a half would be common. Now, why not use a three and a half by three and a half? That's the most common size, of course, when you talk about three and a half inch hinges. Why would you want a three inch hinge? Well, that has everything to do with where the position of the vertical axis of pivoting is. The bottom line is this. Best practice would tell us to stick that vertical axis of pivoting as close to the face of the door as the application allows. So as you move that vertical axis of pivoting closer to the door, further away from the door, you affect how the door uh, not only rotates in comparison to a wall condition, meaning I want to swing the door out far enough to get around my very thick casing or my chair rail or my base or some sort of reason that I need that vertical axis of pivoting in a particular location. Or you don't have anything to get around or your door will only go to 90 degrees. You won't go to 180 degrees. In that case, bring that hinge, bring that barrel, the vertical axis of pivoting, as close to the face of the door as possible. A three inch wide hinge is a smarter hinge to use than a three and a half by three and a half when there's no conflict to go to 180 degrees. There's nothing that's going to prevent the door from getting to 90 then continuing on. Because where the door is in relationship to the wall, how much room there is when the door is at 180 degrees has everything to do with where that vertical axis of pivoting is. So you, again, best practice would put you in a position to determine what width of hinge. Don't just assume three and a half means three and a half. Three and a half could mean six or five um, or three in this case. Um, so be mindful. Um, you're going to want to think that through. Now, how do I think it through? Let's talk about that in a moment. Before we get there, um, this is a steel based hinge. Two bearing packets is what you'll find on a standard weight hinge. That's the 129 thousandths part. This was a little bit lighter than that. That's okay. Um, five knuckle. You can see why it's five knuckle. And it will include screws uh, with the heads in a complementary finish. You're going to get all machine and all wood screws. By all means, indicate in the comment field what screws you want. Let's say you have a metal door and a metal frame. You could. Condo buildings built in the late 60s and early 70s on Lake Michigan and Chicago, north of um, the Gold Coast, all the way up to Evanston and beyond, in fact. A lot of metal frames, a lot of very thin walls, three and a half inch thick walls or whatever it would be, um, and hollow core, unusual size hollow core inch and three eighths doors. Steel frames, hollow core wood doors. 
Why was that selected? I was obviously in vogue at the time. Steel, knockdown steel frames are very quick and easy to put in. They're relatively inexpensive, um, but they're gonna require machine screws. It's gonna be awfully hard to find a 10, I believe this would be 1024, a 1024 machine screw on a Saturday morning in a black finish. Indicate in the comment field what the composition is of the door and frame so the onus is on the factory to package it correctly. I told the factory I wanted all machine screws and all wood screws, so they've sent me six of each, so I can't go wrong. Whatever the client's doing, I'm covered. This is what's called a button tip. They can do decorative tips on hinges like that. Um, button tip just looks like the button on your shirt or coat. They can do ball tip, urn tip, steeple tip, acorn tip. Stanley can't do those names specifically. Uh, if I think of it, when we get to the catalog, I'll show you the tips. They have CT, ST. CT is an acorn. ST is a steeple tip. Certainly a ball tip, a BT, I believe they can do. Uh, I know they can do that. I, I believe it's called BT. Um, now, let's switch to the screen view. Let's look at the supporting information, and we'll talk about how you determine the width of the hinge. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, here's the hinge that we're looking at. This is just a generic image from the factory. Let's look at the actual hinge. These are photographs down below. This is what would be called the template pattern. These holes are in a exact location. The location of those holes can be reviewed on the template for this hardware. The exact locations would be referred to as the template pattern. So if you're buying a door and a frame from a manufacturer and it's the hinge locations for the screw holes are made to the template pattern, this hinge will fit. I like the Stanley logo in the sense that it's not a huge logo on the hinge. I've seen larger. I don't like excessive corporate advertising on my hardware. Stanley keeps it reasonable. It looks a little bit bigger than otherwise because it's a smaller hinge. Gives you an up close view of what black looks like. Then your screw package. So there are some images of the hinge. Let's also take a look at the extended description. Uh, this is actually not our hinge. Let's pull up our hinge. There's our hinge. Okay, here's our hinge. Extended description information down below. The part number, medium weight doors of average frequency. All doors have template, pardon me, all hinges have template screw hole location for use on either wood or metal doors. Three and a half by three, standard weight. They can do residential weight. Hinges can be done in residential weight, which is about 96 thousandths. Standard weight is about 130 thousandths. Heavy weight's about 180 thousandths. It changes depending on the size of the hinge. Steel base, five knuckle, ball bearing. It's a removable pin. You can easily drive that pin out. I separate the leaves when I hang doors. Two Stanley permanently lubricated non-detachable ball bearings. Oh, okay, I said 129 before. It's 123. US 1D black coated. Let's take a look at the documents here, and then we're going to talk about wide throw in a moment. Tech drawing. This is the template. This document is literally called the template. If you wanted to see what the template location was, this would be the document is. This would be the document to refer to. Customers will very often, here's our hinge, by the way, ask for the length of the leaf, the F dimension. It's here. Should you need it? Three and a half by three, it's inch and an eighth. Every half inch you go up in width, it's going to add um, a quarter inch. They don't do a three and a half by four. Three, three and a half, five, and six. The next document is installation template. This doesn't really apply. This is from a this is a relic of a bygone era. But nonetheless, this shows you where to mortise material. It's good information to have. Um, I also think the cut sheet is a good one to look at. This will show us a table of all of the FBB hinges that they'll make in a 179, which is steel-based standard weight, stainless or non-ferrous based, brass or bronze. 
stainless steel polished, stainless steel satin. It's the same uh, part number for those non-ferrous based material. Options are here. Then the different sizes that can be done in an FBB 179. You need to go to a larger hinge, which Stanley can do. It won't be an FBB 179. It'll be something else. Hinge size um, gives an idea of the max weight for a door on hinges. This is a uh, document from National, a sister company to uh, Stanley. This doesn't actually belong here. I'll get that removed. Now, there is a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page. From here, we can pull up not only all of the Stanley products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to their hardware catalog. I like this old version because I'm familiar with it. It's going to give us everything we need to know about Stanley hinges, even though it's a dated document by this point. Um, because we're talking about a hinge that's unusual in the sense of it being not three and a half by three and a half, let's just talk about how you determine that. And that there's a formula. It's called the formula for determining wide throw or how wide of a hinge you need. And it's right here. Okay, it's very easy. But it's door thickness minus back set times two plus clearance plus inset. So let's dissect that. Door thickness. You know what that is. You can measure that. The back set is the amount of the door that you have not chiseled for the hinge. It's generally a quarter inch. It can be different, but it's generally a quarter inch. Take door thickness minus the back set, multiply that times two. Inch and three eighths minus quarter is inch and an eighth times two is two and a quarter. Okay, we're at two and a quarter. Add our clearance. Let's say that that's one inch. Now we're at three and a quarter. Let's add our inset. Let's say that's an eighth of an inch or zero. Let's just say it's zero because it's probably zero. We're at three and a quarter. Well, use the next largest hinge width. That'd be three and a half. In that scenario where we had some baseboard or some cove or some chair rail that we needed to get around if the door was going to 180 degree, we'd have to go to a three and a half inch wide hinge. Well, if clearance was zero, then we're still at two and a quarter, and inside is zero. You go to the next widest, uh, widest hinge, that would be three inch. And we can look at what that looks like here. A couple of different, you know, just examples to discuss. You know, whether it be a steel frame or a wood frame, whatever it is, you've got your barrel here. You know, when your door gets out to 90 degree open, okay, not too much to worry about. But when you bring that door, when you bring that door out here, you need to think about what's the di what's the distance here. What is that? Um, and that's the heart of the matter. So in a scenario where you have a steel frame at your favorite local coffee shop, partition construction, a couple of studs, that frame wraps the wall. You have no clearance issue. And the inside is either, is probably 332nd of an inch. Well, let's, let's consider this option. What if we've got a masonry wall, an eight inch CMU wall, and now you've got a five and three, you've got a five and three quarter frame. Okay, where you put that hinge barrel has got everything to do with what's happening here. So if you wanna to go to 180 degrees, you're gonna to need to figure out what the clearance is. You're gonna to have to add for that is the bottom line. So where does the door need to be? 
Oops. In relationship to all of this. And you're probably going to need to move that hinge out here a little bit. So that when your door goes... From here, you want it to swing out that way. You're going to get it out to here. Okay, you've got to be mindful of what's happening here. So that's how you determine um, wide throw. Another use for wide throw can also be. It's not common. Pardon me. Another use for determining the width of the door. Let's start that one more time. Another use for determining the width of the hinge can be expressed by something like this. Please imagine that these are four equal leaves. You want to have these doors swing out. You want them to stack to the face of these doors. And then you want all of this to swing this way so that it all stacks like that. You need to think about what that vertical axis of pivoting is going to be. Because you want those doors to fold and then get out of the way completely open and against the wall. It's not very common, but it does happen. Customers do want to order hinges. They call and say, I need help determining these hinges for this application. Um, I've seen another instance. In, I was in my Manhattan one time, and if you've been there, you know how compressed everything is for space. Um, there was a delivery area for trucks in a business, and they took, they needed to really maximize how much room they were working with. They had these, it was one of the coolest uses I've ever seen of, of hinges. They took this, they folded it here, they took that, they folded it here, they took that, they folded it here, they took that, and folded it all here. They went with increasingly wider hinges so that this was all stacked out of the way all day long when they were receiving deliveries. It was brilliant. Um, you got to be mindful how much weight is happening here because the hinges here are going to be really troublesome. Um, you might want to pivot on that end of the um, opening if you're going to stack all those doors. But this, these are a couple of extreme examples that illustrate, you know, 99.99% .99 of the time, you don't need to think about the width of the hinge. But if you put some thought into it, you go from not thinking about it to not having the best solution or the wrong solution to having the perfect or the most ideal solution, depending on your application. So it could be garden variety or it could be something really cool like this. All right. Um, the rest of this catalog is an encyclopedia when it comes to talking about hinges. If you're an architect, a homeowner, an engineer, a contractor, a distributor, a manufacturer, you should possess a working knowledge of this material if you deal with hinges at all. Um, using terms that we use in the industry is where you start so that we're using the same language. They have a use chart here. How heavy is your door? What's the frequency of use? Here's the hinge that you could should consider using from Stanley. They're going to talk about swing clear, wide throw, raised barrel, anchor hinges, all sorts of different applications. Full mortise, half mortise, half surface, full surface, fasteners. I also, oh, uh, palm, uh, palm L hinges or olive knuckle hinges, they do here. That might be called a uh, uh, you know, an olive knuckle hinge really is what I would call this type of hinge. Some people may refer to this. This is an intermediate pivot is what I would call this, actually. Um, but um, parliament is another term used for hinges like this. Different hinge types are expressed here. Security options are expressed here. If you have an outswing door, that's if you have an exterior door that swings out, you want to look at that. Raised barrel, wide throw, electric transfer hinges. Here's an olive knuckle hinge. First time I had to mortise for one of these, it really baked my noodle, determining what the center line was on the door and frame. I got it right. It took me an hour to figure it out, but I got it right. I had mentioned decorative tips, steeple, ball, and crown. They don't call it acorn. They call it a crown tip. ST, probably BT, 
and uh, CT, what they call that. Anyway, you get the picture. It's a helpful document. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. So I'm partial to Stanley, and it's because, um, well, certainly because I'm familiar with their product line, but also they've been making hinges for 150 years, about. They've really got it figured out pretty well. Their fit and finish is always very good. The only markings on this hinge are the fingerprints that I leave after I touch them. Always clean when it comes out of the box is what I'm saying, and it's just a hinge. A hinge is just a hinge, right? Well, you know, why, why, just because it's a hinge, why should it have a lower standard of caliber when it comes to fit and finish? Stanley does a really good job with that material. Plus, their ball bearing hinges actually swing freely when they come out of the box. Other manufacturers' hinges, you cannot do that with. Okay, tells me that they're doing something different than everybody else. It is an imported hinge. This hinge is made in Asia. Um, take that for what it's worth, as it may or may not mean anything to you. Um, I personally consider um, that not in Stanley's favor. I would want the backbone of my door that I'm going to use every single day of my life to be a domestically manufactured product. Um, Stanley just doesn't manufacture it here. That's the bottom line. If you have any questions on the FBB 179, 3.5 by 3 in a US 1D or any other Stanley product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.